Hi everybody, I'm Steve and this is Apocalypse Tech on YouTube and the Signs Watcher on Rumble. Now this video will be Angels and Demons. As I'm going to travel a little bit out of my comfort zone and some of this is going to come out of apocryphal because I've been coming up with some more information as I've been working down here in the command center. <laughs> command center. It's a basement. Well anyhow, I've got some really old information that I've sat on a long time, kind of forgot about it, that's kind of important, that's going to add to this. You're going to see this later in the video. It's going to bring a lot of this timeline stuff that I have together. So when I came back down into the studio... The basement. Well, at any rate, because I'm going to gather some and show you some information, some of it's apocryphal, if you understand what that is. So it's not the Word, it's not in the Bible, but there are Bible references, I'm going to, so I'm going to go in and out of that. And I have to be very careful uh, how I how and what I want to say because you sure don't want to get an angel mad at you. I'm going to get that guy who wants to come with me. But even though there's only one archangel mentioned in the Bible that I know of, which is Michael, I do believe there's more because you have to make some of this scripture, you have to make the scripture true. And one third means there has to be more. So I'm going to show you that. And the one thing I wouldn't want to do is have an archangel mad at me. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss out his ass. Revelation 21, 12, and this is describing the outside of the new Jerusalem or the new heaven, and had a great wall and high and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So we know exactly that there are at least 12, I wouldn't say exactly, that there are at least 12 angels, but there are archangels as well, and here's some more. Luke 2, 13, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So already in heaven there is a multitude of beings. Revelation 5, 11, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. So, you know, you could almost go on, but you're never going to narrow down just about how many angels there actually is, except for the first one where there is at least 12. But I'm going to say, since they stand on the wall, I'm going to guess that there's 12 archangels and that means an, another set, Revelation 12, the second wonder, a great red dragon. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and the seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. Revelation 12, 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So the way I look at it, if there's 12 on the wall, and I think those would be your archangels, that means there are six angels that are archangels that are now archdemons, I guess is how you would put it as they are cast out out of heaven. And so we had a sign for that, and this is where it began and took place. So somehow they were able to get back into heaven as we know that he was already here. And I'm going to be able to revisit a little bit of this quickly at the end of this video. Now my opinion about angels is that they are normally here and they are sent forward to give you some sort of message that puts you on a task. Most most uh, other people that I have talked to that's had some sort of interaction with one, it's always pointing them or putting them on a task to do something which usually affects others. You don't need this portal. 
you only need me. So, do you want to be healed? Now that pool is one of the things that I'm going to talk about here a little later. So let's go. Get up. Pick up your mat. And walk. So before I get back to that, just how powerful are the angels? Genesis 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at even and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground and he said behold now my lords turn in I pray you unto your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways and they said no nay but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even men of Sodom, compassed the house round both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray to you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes, only unto these men do nothing. For therefore they came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow and came in to sojourn, and he will needs it be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Now the point of that story I've been, you know, been trying to make, and didn't read it as good as I wished I could, because um, some Bibles actually do that a little better than the KJV. Um, but Lot's impression is that these angels could have been dealt with like that by those men. He Just by their appearance and how they come across, he felt that they could have been fell victim to them. So he needed to do anything, and he offered up his two daughters to save them, but they still had enough power to protect themselves. Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now it was that power that God was granting man dominion over the earth and giving him dominion over every living thing in the earth. And that is why I think one third of the angels rebel. And so God reached down, grabbed the soil, and created man. And so instead of just the spoken word, God physically applied himself into this creation. So there is a higher level of power here. Exodus 20, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And he physically wrote the Ten Commandments. And that is how high Moses is in this level of power. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you still have to show honor 
to those, you know, at least some respect to the angels, depending on whether they're more powerful than man or not. I right? As a rich goddamn mother, a marble angel with her finger pointing. Not a who? Not a body pointing up like this. All right, then a marble angel. Doesn't have to be an angel. I don't have too much in common with angels. Oh, besides, take the Ritter's angel. Some kid shot her finger off, and after that, it looked like she was just shaking her fist. Oh, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting light. And so angels were already the servants of God and dispatched many of his uh, needs that he needed things done, as you'll read throughout the Bible, especially in Revelation, where it shows how many times an angel announces or starts something. But in this case, God physically created man, physically wrote the law, and then became God in the flesh with his physical presence. Jesus, if you do not renounce your words, we will have no choice but to follow the law of Moses. I am the law of Moses. Now again, I said I was going to step out of the comfort zone. Uh, those words right there could be found in the Book of Mormon, not really in the uh, Bible itself. Um, so there, if you watch The Chosen, there is a few ad-libs. I just think it makes it more personable. And I'm going to tell you what, if you're expecting perfection out of someone trying to deliver the word, which is righteousness, which is what we're supposed to be here for. If you're going to criticize everyone, there is never going to be anyone perfect that's going to be able to deliver that. So now, what about that pool? Every day the water steams and bubbles, and some people believe that it's stirred up by an angel who heals the first person who gets to the stirred water. And so I honestly would recommend that uh, series, The Chosen. It... Uh, puts everything in, in kind of a personable uh, perspective and makes things, in my opinion, simplified. And as you know, I like keep it simple, stupid. But in that particular episode there, it's where he goes and he heals that man who walks out and ends up stopping his brother from doing something very bad at the right time. And everything fell right into place. Exactly like how these signs, timelines, fall perfectly in the place there is a story to be told. And so remember, if I said there was 12 angels on those walls or at those gates in heaven, there are probably archangels, and a third of them would be six more that fell. Revelation 9, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the reasons of the smoke of the pit. And so this is what I'm talking about. This is a satellite photo of the Kuwaiti oil fires covering their tracks as locusts poured out upon the earth. But this is when they retreated, but this could be seen from the heavens. And so we have Saddam of Saddam Hussein, and it says here other meanings include one who frequently causes collisions, powerful collider, and powerful confronter, but so people have been getting into this because it used to say powerful collider to cause great destruction. And so he is who I have for the destroyer. Revelation 9, 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And so that's the one I want to talk about is that particular green thing, which I believe is the loosening of a particular angel. And so here 
What is Archangel Raphael known for? And you can see it emanates a lot of green. As it says here, Archangel Raphael, recognized universally in various spiritual traditions, is a powerful figure known for his divine healing powers and guidance in exploring the expanse of Archangel Raphael's influence. Diverse aspects need to be examined, including his roles, historical background, symbolism, healing powers, and cultural depictions. Now, again, Raphael is not mentioned specifically in the Bible, just the one referenced the possible angel that was at those pools. Archangel Raphael in the Bible would be known from the book of Tobit, which isn't part of the Bible. And as you've seen from the uh, movie picture uh, with Jesus healing people, even the blind, furthermore, Raphael's healing abilities are showcased when he helps cure Tobit's blindness. Now, I know there's other writings about like the Nephilim that shows you uh, some of the interaction angels may have presented, but a lot of that is just plain not what the Lord wants you to see with the Word or with the Bible with the book of truth. And that's why I said I'm going to have to be kind of careful about this. But one of the things that I just found kind of odd is Archangel Raphael in other religious texts. Now he's known, that's the little green spark in the Catholic part of Bible prophecy, but beyond his biblical appearances, Raphael figures prominently in various non-canon-like texts and spiritual traditions. His healing and guiding attributes are recognized and revered in different cultures around the world. In Islamic lore, Raphael is known as Israfil, one of the four archangels mentioned in the Quran. And so now, wouldn't you know it, it just got a little bit spicier. And so back to the word, Revelation 9, 11, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Greek tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. The destroyer, and what I've said before that I believe Satan possessed him to get this task done of possibly releasing or letting loose another angel. I don't know what it was. It's... Go on. It changed colors. Like the chameleon. It uses the jungle. Okay, so edit that jungle part out because this is the practically the desert. But Satan would say that the earth is his kingdom or his dominion. Although I've always said that God's kingdom is everywhere, and Satan's kingdom is everywhere he is. And so that uh, scene earlier was called the Pool of Bethesda. And the Pool of Bethesda is basically upheld in the Catholic ministries. Revelation 12, 9, And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan. So we know he has everything to do with it. And according to the timeline, and all of this occurred here, 1991, shortly after George H.W. Bush came to office. And so we know that Satan is one of them, but he also, it sounds like he may have been trying to free up another angel the one known as maybe the healer. And uh, when you know it, the symbol of medicine with two serpents around it. And this one, I didn't make this up, it happens to be green. So is it any wonder that the first horse, whether it's this eclipse or this eclipse, but the first horse of the apocalypse had something to do with medicine? <laughs> What's that? Antidote. To what? The poison you just drank. <laughs> 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 
But as many of you know from prior videos, there's a lot more to that. And there's some, we have to find four other angels. Revelation 9, 13, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So now you remember I said we had 12 angels on that wall, and I think they're archangels, even though I've already said there's only one mention in the Bible. Um, but that would mean there are many other angels in heaven. But that means a third were cast down, and I have six there with uh, Satan, Raphael, and these four angels loosed at the Euphrates. And so these angels, fifth trumpet here and the sixth trumpet here, had to do things to put more things into place. And in between them was the U.S. 911. This place is cursed. What is it with human curses? Which is none more than a reflection of Revelation 911. Yeah, I know if you have a good curse. This is cursed. That is cursed. Yeah, rest, will you? Now remember, I referenced George H. W. Bush, a Patriot missile defense battery that was set up in Israel during the first Gulf War in January 1991. Since then, it has become known as Israel's Iron Dome defense system compared to U.S. NASAMs. So now at the end of this video, you're going to get a really fast review to basically put everything into perspective. But we had our fundamental transformation eclipse here on August 21st, 2017, shortly after 33 days, uh, the Revelation 12 sign. And we use the scriptures to go your three years, three months, three weeks, three days. And that is the election being um, not be able to appeal it and the first uh, vaccine handed out. But we continue through that timeline and we get the beginning of the wrath of Satan uh, carried away in the wings of an eagle. And we get to this other beast coming up out of from the land. And it has Revelation 13, 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, which was Yair Lapid and Neftali Bennett. And he spake... As a dragon, so he supported everything that Bite Me was doing with the United States. And he exerciseth all the powers of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, who deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And that's Iron Dome. AI driven. We get problems. Now, since the Patriot Missile System, a company called Raphael, different spelling, and I think I know why, uh, took over and created an AI, made it fully automated, and now it's turning into a laser defense system. And then here on July 14th, uh, second signing, of the Abraham Accords, but this brings in the Abomination of Desolation UN Resolution 2334. This was done by Yair Lapid, one of those two horns, and pre uh, apostate President Biden, the man who he gave him his seat and his power. This is all Revelation 13. Shared those secrets of what Raphael had with Lockheed Martin, and he turned it into Iron Beam. Now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station. 
Fire at will, Commander. And so now today, when uh, Trump turned 77 years, 7 months, 7 days old, about the same time, that same technology was turned over to the lion part, the mouth of the lion, which was be Great Britain, and they turned it into dragon fire. And here we have, they were testing, started testing us and trying to build this in 2017, and now they have it fully operational. And as Tennessee Craig told you in an earlier video, this was uh, first tested at the Hebrides off the coast of Scotland. And so the man with the Hebrides Revival Bible, which is why I said this was a time of Ecclesia for everyone to stand up and begin the revival as our enemy becomes more powerful. So to use Occam's razor, keep it simple, stupid, that is how I come up with six archangels, but it's a guess. I mean, none of this is its never going to be exact science. But I'm just telling you that there's clues in the scriptures and some of the signs that kind of help you through this. And the things that are going on can help tell a story, but uh, we won't know the actual truth until we actually go through it or see it for ourselves. Um, but I wanted to get to you about that name as to why it was different. Well, if you remember the stories I shared with you saying that Abram became Abraham and Everyone will get their Christian name. Well, the heavenly name for um, this archangel was Raphael, spelled with a PH. But now that it's been thrown down to earth, the name would be Raphael. So I showed you in a prior video about Luke 10, 18, as I saw Satan fall, and in Hebrew as Barak Obama. He did have, at one time, a Christian name, which was Barry Sotero. And this was the information I said that I have known for the longest time, but forgot about placing this together to show you his, say, satanic given name. It is written on his birth certificate, whether you can believe it or not, as Barack Hussein Obama. Well, now, wouldn't you say that was a little coincidental? And before I get to that little rundown that I wanted to show you to try to help convince you of the what's going on around you and these pre-tribbers and mid-tribbers are way off base, um, but there's a story that took place on one of the 911s, and I never really went back to it or showed you, but there was some news that came out maybe you didn't know. Now, you remember back... <laughs> When Benghazi took place, there was a, they said that was a filmmaker who at the time had like 49 views on his video, but he was blamed for Benghazi. And it says here, blamed for Benghazi, filmmaker jailed after attack, now lives in poverty and fear. It says here, Nicola Basili, Nicola, the Coptic Christian whose short video, The Innocence of Muslims, was initially faulted for sparking September 11, 2012 terror attack at U.S. diplomatic compounds in Libya, is now living in a homeless shelter run by First Southern Baptist Church in Buena Park, California. He has served time in prison, been shamed publicly by the White House, and threatened with death. And you know, he had an interesting title for someone who was about to start something, the Iran peace deal, and was in to Muslim literature. Oh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. And so, in a nutshell, the demons conspire. They come up with a plan to cause uh, the division of Israel... And they created UN Resolution 2334, so the perfect nine months takes off, and we have the beginning of the war in heaven. While that's going on, here on earth, we have our two witnesses come forward, 
and they create a peace deal recognizing Jerusalem as the capital, creating the Abraham Accords. But after the war in heaven and Satan is cast out, the wrath of Satan begins and it brings us up, if you want to believe this or not, I have seven years, twice, but that's all I can find, and this one is quite an outstretch, but as we're coming up to this April 8th, and like I said, there's another sign that day, but that's in an earlier video. But this Wrath of Satan runs out, Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, this October. And so we have those two factions the UN Resolution 2334, where this land is going to end up being given, at least part of it, to Ishmael. And then Isaac is going to uh, not get his part. So that's where the Abraham Accords, and that's the final battle, is over all this, back to that holy land, back to that same spot where New Jerusalem will come down. So it may be a little while before I get back to this, but remember, um, we have, I want to go over some of these other timelines and maybe some of the possibilities of these things happening in the aftermath of this. But one of the things I wanted to point out and have you remember that I ran those timelines from the uh, signing of the Abraham Accords. And remember, the 1335 days is April 9th. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh. Okay, so <clears throat> this uh, video may have been a little bit different. Uh, something different for an umpire. And, you know, as an umpire, we try to strive for perfection. We'll never be perfect, but we strive for it. But you may find this video. On into the wind of it is first offering. Just a bit outside. He tried That's right. You simply can't make this up. You're the great Satan. And I just love how he stares at him as he just goes on witnessing. So, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. The peace of Christ be with you. Good luck, and thanks for watching.